Hello, gentle people, and welcome to my Sparrow Art Vibes YouTube channel. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I'm Hazel, a self-taught resin artist, and every week I share how I create the products that I sell in my growing Etsy shop and my Shopify store. Shout out in this video to Marlene Caballero, who watched video number 122 on creating the Guyanese themed dominoes and ask about creating the storage box. So, in today's tutorial, I will be creating a storage box for a set of personalized dominoes with a Puerto Rican flag, and this is for an Etsy customer. I hope that my new and returning subscribers and viewers will be inspired, I say again inspired, to create something beautiful. So let's take a look at the materials that we need for this project. The materials that we need to make our storage box to go with our Puerto Rican dominoes, we start with the mold. And the box mold is six pieces. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Six piece storage box mold. We need our resin, and my go-to resin is the Craft Smart. That's the Part A resin, and that's the Part B hardener. We will need a large measuring cup. We will need a small measuring cup. We are going to add two additional colors of mica powder so we need two paper cups. We of course need the stir stick for the large bowl and we need stir sticks for the small cup. Won't work with resin without the nitro gloves. And then our mica powders are going to be the eye candy Baku Red, the eye candy dark ocean blue, that's pretty though, that's not really dark. For our stripes, Pearl X Micro Pearl. And while the box snaps together really tightly, um, I always make sure that I add some um, adhesive. You, This is Gorilla Clear Grip uh, Clear Adhesive. It's similar to E6000, and so that's all we need. So I'm going to take this stuff off the table, and we will get started with our pour. Uh, to work on this box, uh, my measuring cup has been marked at, there's a purple line for 300, and 600 because we need 600 milliliters of resin. So we have part B hardener. We're going to pour 300. Just have 300. Wow. Then we need 300 of the Part A resin. I always remind crafters to follow manufacturer's instructions. And with the Craft Smart resin, again, our instructions tell us that we have to do a mixing ratio of one to one, which is what we just did, 300 and 300, and that we need to mix for a minimum of five minutes. And that's what we're going to do. 
And obviously you can fast forward through this. This is not something you really need to watch. You just need to be aware of how much time it takes to do the things that we're doing. Alrighty, so what I always do is mark on my pieces how much resin they take. So the sides each take 50 milliliters, the front and the back take 100, the top and the bottom take 150. So since we know that the top takes 150 and I'm going to make, oh, let me move these. Since we know that, let me move the shadow. Since we know that the top takes 150, uh, I am going to hold 50 milliliters to make the stripes and the star, as it were. It's not a star, it won't have points on it, but it'll be representative. The other thing that I do is draw on here how the arrow <clears throat> is supposed to be facing, uh, because when you pour, you are pouring in reverse that's important you are pouring in reverse uh, when I do the flag of Guyana when I do the Puerto Rican and the Cuban flags uh, we are pouring backwards so if you unmold this and lay it down you'll be looking at it this way and we want that arrow pointing to my right so I draw that on there um, the same, I have the diagonal lines here for the Trinidadian flag because it has that uh, black diagonal coming through the middle. It's red, black diagonal, white on the outside. So I have all these marks on here as guides for me. And so when we get ready to do this, I just lay this out the way I'm going to be using it. So that's our back, that's our bottom, that's our lid. Oops. That's our front, that's our lid, and these are the sides. So we need to then take 50 milliliters out of what we just mixed so that we can use that <clears throat> for, oops, 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 that's a little bit more, for our for the colors for the flag. So we're going to take this 50 and we are going to divide this, put a little bit in here for the white. Ooh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, no, I'm doing it wrong. Uh, put a little bit in here for the blue. That's what I meant to say. And then the rest of this will be the white. Okay, so we are going to mix our eye candy dark ocean blue. Again, I don't know why they've named it that because that is not a, ooh, that is not a dark blue. That's a really pretty, that's a really pretty almost royal blue. I love this. Okay, so there's our blue to go on our flag. And then our micro pearl to form the stripes as well as the what would be a star in the middle of the blue. It's not going to be a star, it's just going to be a dot because it's representative of a star. Um, again, we're not truly making a flag, we're sort of doing it as an abstract, I guess would be the way to say it. I think describing it as abstract would be more accurate. Okay. White is mixed. Blue is mixed. And 
So now we need to mix our Baku red. So I'm going to put a generous, a generous amount of red in here. I'm going to do a little bit more. Alright, dampen our paper towel and make sure all my dog's hair is out. There's dog hair right there. You don't want dog hair, you don't want lint, dust, anything in your mold. Make sure your molds are clean. My big thing is dog hair. Okay, so I am going to start with the... Um, I'm going to start with the lid to give, make our little abstract flag. And the flag has a, let me make sure I'm in the frame. The flag has a star, then a blue triangle, and one, two, three, four, five stripes. Three red, two white. So we're going to put a little white dot right here to rep represent the star. Then I'm going to pour some blue for that triangle, and then we'll do our stripes. Actually, let me move these, and then I can always scoop this back, but so you can actually see what I'm doing. What is that? Okay, so we're going to put a little white. white drop right there and that's a generous drop when I say drop I mean that's generous that's not a dab and then we are going to pour our blue to make a triangle and I never ever pour everything at one time I always pour some and then see how it reacts. And then we need two white stripes. And we're going to start with the middle. Actually, I don't like that red. That red's not deep enough. Um, I'm going to add some more mica powder to that. I want it to be a deeper, a deeper red. That almost has a pink thing going on. So let me mix up some more mica powder in this. Sorry about that, guys. But that's the advantage of you doing it. If you see something that you don't like, you can correct it or change it. So let me make that a little more red. Oops, 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 oops. See how my white is running over there? I don't want my white running over there. That's just a reminder that this table is not level. My table is not level. So... Let's take care of that now. Sticks under here. And then I'm just going to take the, you can see, gosh, my gosh, look at my, my silicone cat spatula. This is, wow. Okay, so I'm going to just do that. Ooh. Just kind of scoot that back. Same with the blue. Just going to scoot it back some. And again, the color is real. The color on here is symbolic. This we're not making 
a flag. I'm not putting a star in here. We're just getting the gist of the colors so that it's symbolic of the flag. So there goes our triangle. It's not a triangle anymore. Our triangle is no longer a triangle. All right, so back to the red. We, woo, didn't mean to do that. Okay, I messed up, um, so I deleted that. That was a big mess up. Uh, so now I'm just gonna pour this because this is warm. So we need to get this poured because we don't want it to start thickening and then we can't use it, it'll be wasted. Right, and by pouring some of this already, it slows down the heating process. So that's the other reason for getting that poured right now. Okay, so for our lid, uh, I'm going to move this, move this a little closer so you can see what I'm doing or what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah, I gagged. I gagged. So we are going to put a drop of white right here that goes with our the blue. And then we're going to pour a blue triangle. stripes. It's three red and two white. So we're going to pour red. Woo, it's getting thick. Ooh, that's what I was afraid of. not what I wanted. Ooh. Trying to fix one mistake and created another one.
Where's that complete? Oh, what a waste. Looky, guys. I made... Oh, when I messed up, I messed up big. Look at that. It's all set. All right, let's get the white in here. And I'll figure out how to fix this red. That's disappointing. I have to make some more resin. Um, boy, that's, look at that, that's, that's discouraging. Alrighty, I don't know how, that looks to be roughly, I don't know, that looks like it might be maybe 200 milliliters of resin. So, so I am going to mix 200 more. All right, off camera I mixed another 200 milliliters of red resin. Uh, I'm going to add that to this because these have to be leveled out. Boy, what a... And you can see that they've already basically started setting if the other set, so we're going to just really top this off. We've got to make sure these are level. When you go to put your boxes together, if these are not level, your box will not fit properly. So we're leveling these off. I will figure out how to fix this lid. I'm going to add that. I am actually going to pour some of this onto here. This looks like um, looks like Twizzlers. Just going to pour the rest of this in here. I guess for how much I need it was almost spot on. I want to make 
make sure when you're adding like I'm doing now that that resin gets in those corners like this corner right here is empty Okay, let's take the heat gun and pop air bubbles. Okay, and when I did that, then I could see that this corner down here is not full. We need to push that right. We need those corners tight. Boy, if you could see me almost crying, looking at how much resin I just wasted. This is not in that corner, and that's not in that corner. Now this red is running over that blue. We're not going to worry about that because like I said, this is supposed to be abstract anyway. Not a flag flag, but representative of a flag. And so I'm probably, as I'm looking at this, thinking how I'm going to solve a problem. I am thinking that I am probably going to have to do a clear coat. Alrighty, and heat gun one more time. Alright, and then I am going to cover this and allow this to cure overnight. And then um, tomorrow I will have figured out what to do about this. Um, but fear not, I will come up with a solution. We're going to fix that. Okay, gentle people, it is the next day, so I'm going to take the cover off of this. I am not going to unmold these right now. Uh, you remember yesterday where I poured too much resin in the lid, too much red resin, and then I poured the resin off of the lid. Um, I poured it into a coaster mold just so it wasn't wasted. I will unmold this when I unmold these. But um, I said when I, when I closed up last night that I would figure out how to fix this. And so I went ahead and went to bed. Um, and while I lay in bed, I decided I should go ahead and finish pouring resin on the lid. So I did um, make some more um, resin and poured the blue, the white, and the red. And so I still have this, this ridge thing here. This. But you can see the ridge. That glob when the resin had started setting. Let me see if that's a better. Yeah, you see, I got a big old glob of, big old glob of resin there. So again, I poured this, so this is all nice and smooth, but I do have that ridge. So I went to Home Depot and asked the guy, was there anything I could use to try and cut that 
out so he gave me he sold me a Dremel something or the other a Dremel head to go on that so I'm not gonna do it on camera I'm going because if it messes up then I don't want to really look like ridiculous but I am going to try and cut that ridge out I'm going to try and cut that out or cut it down and then sand it but I'm gonna do it off camera and then I will be back so yeah that's we're gonna try and fix um, again that was where the resin when I was trying to clean this off it was taking too long so the resin had started setting and that's what I wound up with but we're gonna fix that not to worry we're gonna fix it Okay, so you can see where I cut that down right through there so I guess what he gave me will work so I'll keep at it Okay, so I have cut the real big humps out of here, and so now I'm going to take my sander and try and sand that smooth. Oh, where's the sander?
All right, we are getting there. We're getting there. Okay, it's almost, it's just almost flat. I'm getting there. That looks good. That looks good from that big old ugly mountain, that ridge that went through there. All right, almost through. Okay. I believe that's smooth enough. I think I can put a clear coat. I think I can put a clear coat on that. Let's wipe it off. Um, okay, I am satisfied. I'm satisfied with that. So I am going to wipe this down in alcohol mix um, a clear coat and just pour a clear coat on this. Um, I am going to mix 20 milliliters of uh, resin for a clear coat on this. I don't need 20, but I can't mix 10 because there's no five on here. So we'll do 20. Um, yeah. I have mixed my clear coat of resin, and so now I'm just going to pour it on this lid. and spread it. This lid will be a little on the heavy side with all this extra resin, but it's worth it. Okay, and a heat gun to pop air bubbles. And I see a couple of spots. I am satisfied. We figured out a way to save that. All right, so we're going to cover this and let this uh, cure and then we'll come back uh, this evening and assemble the box. I am back and um, you watched me spend some time trying to fix uh, the mistake when I pour too much resin. Um, so okay, let's take the cover off of this. And so this is what we have. So now we can actually unmold these. And 
And then of course this was the problem <clears throat> where when I was pouring the red, I poured too much and then I poured it off. And let me just, when I over poured this, uh, you saw me pouring it out and I poured it into this coaster mold so as not to waste the resin. So let me go ahead and just unmold this while we are doing and see what. So that's what we wound up with. So again, this is a coaster. I mean, if I went to a craft fair, I'd sell this at like $4 um, and put it in my oops basket. But the other thing is for anyone who says, well, you took a lot of time to sand that down and all of that. Um, you would have just, you know, poured a new lid. Keep in mind that this is the re-pour. That what was in here, I poured into, when I poured too much resin, too much of the red resin in here and it ran all over, I then poured that into this coaster mold. So this is 60 milliliters of resin right here. <coughs> and then the rest of the resin had already set. And again, you see it set in a pouring. It had, and so I'm guesstimating that that's about 200 milliliters. So that's a lot of resin. So this was the re-pour. So you have 60 here, you have almost 200 here, and then you have the other 100 um, here. So that's what we're talking about. So let's get this out of here. And that's what our cover looks like. That's our cover. So let me get my cuticle cutters and just trim off this off the edges here. Okay, so that's the back side actually looks nicer than the front side. And so again, we kind of lost our triangle that was here, but we do have our one, two, three, four, five stripes, three red, one white. We have sort of that triangle and the representation of the star. So before I do anything else, since I already know that by pouring the um, clear coat, I made the lid a little deeper than it needs to be, and because I have this edge here, I'm just going to take my uh, Dremel and sand these edges. <clears throat> All right, so I um, was getting ready to um, sand. This is this was the re-pour, um, and I said I needed to sand the edges a little more because this is a little thick. But then I actually noticed. And I don't know if you can see, I don't know if I can get the lighting right to see that this edge, this front edge, is a little raggedy from where that resin had already started setting. And then when I actually looked at this, this is a little ee, this is a little ee. Um, I really don't like that. And so what I actually did talk about using up a lot of resin is I've re-poured this. I've made another lid. That's cleaner. That's nicer. And so I'm getting ready to sand this, the edges of this. Just wiping off that uh, sanded edge with alcohol. Okay, so now we are going to assemble our box. Uh, Marlene Caballero, if you are watching, this is for you. So the first thing we do is we start with our, um, oops, we start with our bottom. 
our bottom and when you look at this you will see that there is a finished side and there is a pour side and you can also tell by the um, little curve on the edges so we start with the back and again you will notice that there is a, um, a, a smooth and a finished side to this I am using my Gorilla Clear Grip this is similar to E6000. You do not have to um, glue your pieces together, but because I'm selling mine, I do not want anybody to ever call me and tell me their box came apart. And so I am always adding the um, adhesive to make sure that these pieces are permanently attached. So we have the bottom that we add adhesive to, and then on the opposites, on the opposite seams on this back, we're going to add adhesive. And again, this is not a blob, because we don't want a lot of this stuff squeezing out, but we just want to make sure that that is attached. And so, we try and press that in there. And again, I have never been able to really press it. I always use my little hammer. There we go. I use my hammer and I push that in tight. isopropyl alcohol. Um, I use the 91%. The, the larger the number, the more alcohol and the less water. And so as I um, put these pieces together, I just wipe off any excess glue. It's easier to do it now than it is to try and do it later, and you will see me doing it later. Um, but yeah, so then so we have our bottom and then we have our back and now we do a side and again you can tell which side um, is the correct side based on the finish you'll you'll see it i can't um, explain it differently than that and again we are putting adhesive on the opposite pieces to this set this up here okay, trying to reposition that to make sure you can see what I'm doing so you have the bottom and you have the back so now we're going to tap in one end and again see how this adhesive came out the back right here we want to write that off right away. As much of it as you can get off, do that. So now, what we do is we then add the lid. We put the lid on, then we do the other side. And so, I put my lid on, and I use this tissue box just to keep that lid from falling all over the place. And again, Adhesive, 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 and like I said, we're not putting a lot on here because we don't want this stuff to squeeze all out and be all, make a mess. You are going to put that on there. And make sure see this notch right here this piece that sticks up has to go in that hole right there so when we press this down and we tap this in see how that went right in there that's what we're after perfect perfect and so now 
we can then go back and we can add the front panel. But you have to add the lid. Well, let me say, it's easier to put the lid on before you put the front panel on. And again, we're putting adhesive on, on each of the notches. And again, this is not a lot. We're just making sure, I mean, you see I have to use the hammer to snap this together. So it's tight, but because I'm selling these, as I said, I want to make sure that this fit is secure. All right, and so then we take that last piece, and we And the last piece is always the hardest piece to get in. It is usually not this difficult. I don't know why my front panel oop, is not going in like it's supposed to. I'm like doing something on video and having it not work properly. That is not I can't figure out why that is not a tight fit like it's supposed to be all right well we're going to leave it like it is for now and so at this point, um, to make sure, now you don't have to do this, but I can show you pictures where I do it for every single box. At this point, I then take some big rubber bands and I put rubber bands on this box to hold all these seams nice and tight. So I will sit here and I will rubber band this and I will fast forward through this but you can watch me put the rubber bands on here. Um, and again, it's to hold the seams tight. I don't want these coming loose or loosening, I guess would be the better. And as I said, um, you know, I sell these and so I need to make sure that the quality of the product is superior. Oops. And I went to Home Depot to ask the guy for some kind of um, clamps to go on here. And when I went into Home Depot, I had rubber bands on my box just like this. And I said, you know, I'm looking for some clamps that I can use to hold this together. And the guy says, well, what's wrong with what you have? I sent my rubber bands, and he says, yeah, that looks like that's doing a good job. And I said, you think? And he said, yeah. And then he said he didn't actually have a clamp 
that would do what I wanted this to do anyway. That was the funny thing. Home Depot has everything, but he said he did not have a clamp to do what I wanted it to do. And so what I want you to see is where there's a notch. On each of these notches, I have a rubber band to hold this nice and tight. So I rubber band it this direction, and then I turn around and I rubber band it the other direction to hold the other seams in place. Because you want pressure on this to keep these seams nice and tight. I don't know, someone might say, well, what size rubber bands do you use? Um, I can't answer that question because my bag is a bag of assorted. I got this from Office Depot. It's a bag of assorted rubber bands. And so I just go in and use the larger. I like the thicker ones. we need to do this direction. Okay, and if you see any places where you have any gaps, now this back is nice and tight. That's an excellent fit. That's perfect. This side has a little bit of gap there, but it's this front piece. I must have, I must not have put the sticks under the table. You know my table's not level. So there is our box. And we will leave this for the glue to um, dry. And then we'll come back and we will remove our rubber bands and then we will add the name because this box is personalized. So when we come back, we remove the rubber bands, we clean any adhesive that's like, like that or like that. We clean any adhesive um, and then we add the rubber bumps. So we're going to leave this um, for a few hours. Well, I usually leave it, I leave it half a day anyway. If I get up in the morning, unmold this, uh, assemble the box, I put the rubber bands on, then I come back in the evening and remove them. But let me um, now just show you some pictures of some other boxes with the rubber bands so you don't think that I'm just telling you rubber band it. I want you to see that I really do this. So here are some boxes that have been rubber banded. So we need to get rid of our rubber bands that held all of this together. So we have all the box. So now I am going to take um, 
the nail polish remover or what do you call this acetone and just make sure that I have cleaned off all of the glue we want all of the glue off of here And sometimes people don't look at your work, but a lot of times they do. The bottom line is it's your workmanship and you have to show pride in your work. And the way to do that is to make sure that everything is finished really nicely. All right. And then we are going to go ahead and put our our 3M do I have it turned the right way our 3M rubber bumps on the corners here and again I don't put the bumps up here in the corner I put them in about um, almost a half inch So now we need to get the name on here. Um, yes, that looks much cleaner and nicer than that other pour. If we were using the white stripe, we would do the name in red, but this is kind of narrow. If we were doing the red stripe, this would be really narrow. We don't want the name way up here at the top of the box, so what we're going to do is put the name on here in blue. I have already cut the name out Melendez in blue vinyl. And so I am going to put a piece of transfer tape over this. If you um, are not sure how to use the vinyl um, if you have like a Cricut or a Silhouette or uh, um, I have a Cricut Joy. I have a little Cricut Joy because, you know, everything I do is like beverage coaster small stuff. Um, but there's some other videos that I have to show you how to use that. So uh, I have cut the name out in vinyl. I have now put a piece of transfer tape on here. We are going to take the backing off of our transfer tape. We are then going to put our name Melendez. Then we burnish this. Burnish means to rub it firmly. And again, I use a little Cricut tool, but you can always use a credit card. Um, that's how I started out because I didn't want to spend money until I decided this was going to be something I really was going to stick with. And so there's our name. And so what I do is I take this out back. Let me go get it. So I'm going to take this out back. This is not removable vinyl. This is permanent vinyl. But I always spray the cover with um, the Rust-Oleum clear gloss, just so that you don't, t if you touch it, it doesn't peel up or anything. Just, just a good way to finish your work. So I'm gonna take this out back and spray this. And then the box is done, because again, we've already put the um, rubber bumps on. Okay, I am out back, and I have my Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Gloss Clear. And we're going to just spray our cover but it's that name we want sprayed good and we'll come back uh, I do three coats but you don't need to see me do all three but we do three coats of that and then the box is actually finished because the rubber bumps have already been put on it 